Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another video. This time a review of a 1995 film called Jade. Some fantasy, some fantasies go too far if I can talk. Which, I know this film got a lot of shit when it came out, got lambasted by the critics. I know the writer Joe Esterhaus, he's on the credits, but really the director William Friedkin rewrote the film. And, yeah, the, it flopped badly. It did not do well critically either. I think this film's a little bit underrated. It does have its issues. One thing I'll mention that sucks... By the way, this DVD was a gift that I got many, 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 many months ago. I th thank that person for that. I don't want to mention it in case they don't want to mention it. Some people don't. What sucks about this DVD, it does not have the director's cut, which I wanted to see, but I couldn't find it, and it's only on fucking VHS. Why can't you put it on a DVD? Why can't this have a director's cut and the theatrical cut? Because I know the director's cut has a scene with an extended ending, at least a minute or two, which would officially kind of fix one of the issues I had with the film. I couldn't find it anywhere. It was either a dead link, or it was a VHS rip, but it was in a different language. Like, someone would talk, and then someone would all translate, blah, 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 whatever the fuck language it was. So, again, I wanted to see the director's cut with that, and see what the other scenes are. Because I remember that clip of the ending, which I'll mention when I get to it. But, of course, can't see the director's cut, which is not on DVD. So, I would like to see that. But it is what it is. So I couldn't find it anywhere. But Jade, William Friedkin, like I said, directed it. He's directed many films like The French Connection, which I always thought was okay. I, I just, the, the ending was unsatisfying to me. And I enjoy The French Connection too a bit more, to be honest. Let's see, he did To Live and Die in L.A., which I haven't seen in over a decade. Sorcerer, which that was another movie that had an ending that was just unsatisfying to me. Of course, The Exorcist, which I reviewed. The Guardian, which I reviewed pretty recently and actually liked The Guardian. My favorite freaking film is actually The Hunted with Benicio Del Toro and Tom Lee Jones, which I saw in the theater. I love The Hunted. I think he's done others. I know he did a comedy with Chevy Chase, which I haven't seen because I couldn't find anywhere to watch. But I've heard really shitty things about that. Oh, he did that film Bug, which wasn't technically about bugs. It was about a person crazy who thought he saw bugs. and I hate that movie. But uh, I just say this is one of the William Freaking films I do enjoy. I mean, my favorite is The Haunted, but I did like this film. And, first off, I like the cast. I like David Caruso. Now, David Caruso was doing the TV show NYPD Blue. And in the first year, he's like, okay, I'm getting successful in this first year. Maybe I can jump ship and try to get in the movies and take that a risk. And honestly, he failed. Because he did two movies, this film and Kiss of Death. Kiss of Death I do enjoy which he did with Nicolas Cage, Samuel L. Jackson, and quite a few other people in it. And I would say I like that film more than this, but those are two David... I, I like David Caruso as an actor. That's one of the reasons why I do enjoy this film. I'm a big fan of when he finally got back on track with CSI Miami. And before I get to that, what I mean by back on track is both these films flopped, this and Kiss of Death. They flopped big time, and then David Caruso was only in a couple other movies... I, he was in a smaller role in Mad Dog and Glory, which I liked him in that, with Robert De Niro and Bill Murray. And then he was in a supporter role in Proof of Life, which I didn't mind him in that, with Russell Crowe and Meg Ryan. And I love CSI Miami. I have all the show, all the seasons on DVD. Uh, I just, I love all of them. Big fan of that show. Big fan of his character, Horatio Cain. And I've always been a big David Caruso fan, so that's one of the reasons I do enjoy the film. And you also have Chaz Palminteri. 
Palminteri, I probably said his name wrong. I liked him as an actor. I think he's a very capable actor. You also have Linda Fiorentino, who is big. She, the big film she was in is The Last Seduction, which I haven't seen, but I know she would want to do films like Men in Black and Dogma. And I liked her as an actress. She's fine. Also in small supporting roles, you have Michael Bean, who I know I'd worked with William Friedkin on Rampage. And also Richard Crenna, which would be really cool to see Richard Crenna. Um, of course, from the Rambo, first three Rambo films, Leviathan, that there, really miss him. Great actor. And actually, I forgot that James Horner actually did the score, and I thought he did a pretty good job. The score fit the film well. And like I said, the writer Joe Esterhaus, re he wrote the film, but the director rewrote it. William Freakin rewrote it. And the reason I liked the film, I thought this went at a good enough pace. It was only 90-some minutes long. It has a great car chase, which I know a lot of people... The scenes on YouTube, a lot of people are shitting on it because it's unrealistic, it's lame, and it's boring. And when I do that car chase, I'm like, you know what? This is fun. This is entertaining. This is kick ass. I love to see more. This is why you don't see badass car chases like this because we gotta be too much in the reality. You know what's lame? Overrated shit like The Dark Knight. That fucking car chase where it's just the Joker firing eh and then a fucking vehicle flipping over. Or the Bourne films where I blink and I'm like, wait a minute, did I just miss five minutes? Because I don't know where the oh, it's the fucking editing being schizophrenic as shit. Especially what was it, the Bourne Supremacy or whatever. Those car those car chases in the Bourne films fucking suck. I rewatched those films a month or two ago. Those films are fucking overrated. And fucking shitty. Not because of Matt Damon. I liked him as an actor. But their editing sucks dick. In the Bourne films. The editing ruins those films. They fucking horrific. And the first Bourne film is fucking boring. And the second and third film have. Jack shit for editing. If I say. <laughs> what happened? I don't fucking know. Because the editing was too fucking. Drunk. But that's not about that. But I thought the cars, the car chase, I think it's kicks ass. I think it's a great car chase. But a lot of people, oh, it's too unrealistic. Uh, there's no way the car can do that. It would have been wrecked in the first thing. I'm like, too bad. This is, you know, this is a movie, right? Hate to be the bearer of bad news. You know, just saying. But this is why you can't do that in movies nowadays. This is why action films or action scenes suck ass. It's like, unless a superhero is like, oh, yeah, of course they're not realistic. It's a superhero movie. It's like, but even that, they're like, it's got to be more realistic. Come on. But it's about a guy who shoots shit from his eyes. But it's got to be more realistic. <laughs> yeah, this is why, hey, let's suck the fun out of these movies. Please. Yeah, that, that just makes a lot of sense. I'm pissed up my fucking nose is running. Now we get into the film itself. I think the cast works well together. I think James Horner's score fits the film well. I think William Freaking does a good enough job directing wise. Uh, people said the plot was confusing. I was not confused at all. I didn't think it was muddled at all. I liked it more than Basic Instinct, the last film I reviewed, because this film is 30 minutes shorter, which means it has a, I think it has a better pace to it, and more stuff seems to happen. It has more points to it. And David Cruz's character, I like the character. Unlike Michael Douglas and Basic Instinct, which is probably the point, says he's a scumbag, but I like to have something to root for. I can root for David Caruso. Really, the only problem I have with the film is I thought the ending was a bit unsatisfying, which I get to, which has helped a little bit. If I can see the director's cut, there's only a fucking VHS. For some fucking reason. <laughs> but anyway, William Freakin, he's a very capable director, especially visual-wise. I mean, the beginning of the film is this panning through this mansion, and then you see this blood seeping from under under something, and then David Cruz is at this party, and he plays... Let's see, get his name, if they say here. Corelli, uh, district attorney. 
and he's friends with Chaz Palminteri's character, who's an attorney and a local power broker, and then Chaz Palminteri's wife is Linda Fiorentino, who is a psychologist. So he's at a party with them, and he gets called into this crime scene. We have this guy hanging off, and it looks really nasty. Like he's hung up, and I don't know the way it looks. I, mean, I guess it's blood, but it looks like all the skin is fucking gone from here down. Or I don't know why. Every time I look at, it, I'm like, did is all the skin gone here? It looks completely fucked up, and the guy's hanging there. It looks pretty ghastly and uh, bloody. And they're looking around, and he actually finds this little thing, and opens up, and it's a bunch of pubic hair, really enough. And sends that in, and finds some stuff with a certain Asian writing. And he goes to see Victor Wan. Victor Wan has a little cameo, a little role in this, where a guy interprets Victor Wan, telling him that the symbol means Jade. And if you wonder, Michael Bean plays another cop. He's got a mustache, so it's like anytime I see Michael Bean with a mustache, you gotta think, he's okay, he's gonna be a dick. Just like he was in the abyss, he's in this. He's a dick, and he's probably the bad guy. And you wouldn't be too wrong. <clears throat> but uh, beware of Michael Bean with a mustache. But during the investigation, they realized that the guy who was killed was a little bit of a power figure who had photos, incriminating photos of the governor having sex with a prostitute, and the governor is Richard Trenna. And pretty much he has to, Caruso takes the picture, shows it to the governor, says, hey, were you being blackmailed? And I like Richard Trenna. He's like, I don't get blackmailed. I do the fucking, I don't get fucked. <laughs> I like that. I mean, I just say I like the writing in this more than Basic Instinct, so I think William Freakin did fine with fixing some of Joe Esterhaus' shit. Because I'm not a big fan of the Joe Esterhaus as a writer. But, pretty much as the investigation goes on, they realize that there's this thing going on where. The guy who was killed at the beginning of the film, he would take pictures of videotape shit and he was going to lead him into blackmail. And pretty much how he would have these women uh, fuck people, especially more higher up people, including the governor, in this sort of beach house type of place where there's uh, sex toys, dildos, cocaine, and uh, or as David Caruso calls it, it's a fuck house. I don't know why, I just smirk when he says that. I don't know why. Like, he's right, it's a fuck house. <laughs> I, know, I just didn't think, what would this be called? Okay, yeah, call it a fuck house. That probably was a Joel Esterhaus thing, but I'll, that's one I can be fine with. And I like some of the dialogue. I mean, there's another detective who's working with Dave Caruso, who's fucking with this uh, friendly way, I should say messing with this other f detective who's female saying you could do this and that hey there's some nice jelly and stuff here and the girl says to the guy oh yeah how about you rip off some of those buck plugs because they're designed for the perfect asshole <laughs> so I like some of the dialogue in this movie and they didn't they realized that the dead guy was filming stuff in order to blackmail the men and they go find the girl who is in the photo with Richard Crenna, and that's actually Angie Everhart. Which, if you look it up, she's... I think she was in Bordello Blood. I could be wrong. I think that's... Yeah, I think that's Angie Everhart. I could be wrong, though. But you have a little bit of foot chase in Chinatown, Catcher. And I really like David Caruso's character. I, I always liked... Him as an actor, I liked his presence, I liked his look, I liked his delivery. A lot of people make fun of him for that. I know the Razzies nominated him for the worst new star. But I can say, fuck the Razzies, they can kiss my ass. I vote for them as the worst award show ever. 
in the history because they fucking can suck my balls. Whether they're clean or sweaty, it don't fucking matter. The fucking Razzie can lick them either way. And I'm sure they like it. That's how much they love fucking sucking. Anyway, I do like David Caruso. I liked him in this scene where she tells him, oh, she'll be a lawyer. And David Caruso pretty much shows a photo and tells her straight, well, you know what's going to happen? You're going know, to call your attorney. And then you're going to tell him that you had sex with the governor. And there's a photo of it. In which case, your attorney is going to tell you to go fuck yourself and then hang up on you. Here, payphone is right out there. I like the delivery from David Caruso. I think he worked very well in the film. I think he worked. And he's not an asshole. He's not a scumbag. He's a guy to root for. And a girl mentions about how there's these groups. She was told to have sex with these people and how. Uh, the people at times didn't want her. They wanted this girl named Jade who must have rot the governor's world and this figure named Jade and who is she and could she be the one who killed and stuff keeps happening to David Caruso. One time he's driving, there's no brakes and he's trying to go in, trying to miss these kids on this bus and the car just flips over a nice big flip. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't do that nowadays. Just, to, just have it hit a portal. Beep. This is how it happened in real life. You can't do that for a film. Fuck that. I'd rather have this. Give me a car flip. Give me a big car flip for a film. There's one that if you see the trailer, that's what you see at the end of the trailer. Well, they least another, you get some prints from the first crime scene, which lead to Linda Fiorentino. She mentions some stuff. And there's this tape that was at the, the fuck house, as Dave Caruso called it, that was burnt. They were able to fix it, and they realized that Linda Fiorentino was fucking people. And you get the sense that she was doing it because Chaz Palmentier was cheating on her first. And then also there's a line of dialogue which I thought Linda Fiorentino said I liked her speech people who commit these acts are in many ways no different from you and me but they are no longer able to control their urges they disassociate themselves from their own actions while also experiencing hysterical blindness they're blind to the darkness within themselves which pretty much is what her character is all about is at the end of the day, her character at times sort of the switches turn and she's just pretty much pretty much a dirty slut. I don't know I don't know how else to say it. Like she's very nice, conservative, and maybe this is because Charles Palman Chas Palmentary why can't I say his fucking name? Palmentary has been cheating on her, or maybe it's because of something else. But the film is not really about the psychology of what makes her tick. I don't know, maybe some of this stuff was in the director's cut that I can't fucking find and watch. Why isn't that, again, why isn't that not on the DVD? Only on VHS? Just saying. Kind of stupid. I know there's a Blu-ray and I read up it's not on the Blu-ray either. Just the theatrical cut. And I don't even think this is fucking widescreen. I remember reading somewhere that the director prefers pan and scan. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, but pretty much, Dave Caruso is wondering, okay, did this girl do it? Is this, is this girl into it? Like, did she kill the guy at the beginning? See, this mystery I thought was more interesting than the one of Basic Instinct. A because it's thirty minutes shorter. B because there's more shit happening. I mean, oh shit, David Caruso, almost, the brakes have fallen out and flips over. Or oh, you get this really good car chase that I will mention in a little bit. But they're watching this tape, the sex tape. Um, another line of dialogue I liked is when the first time, when they find out that Linda Fiorentino's on the tape, Michael Bean's there with David Caruso. And Michael Bean says something like, you ever take it like that? And David Caruso goes, is that an offer? And Michael Bean goes, yeah, you wish. 
game. They do a lot better than I could. But anyway, they show the tape. Actually, the car chase is before that because they see the tape and he's going to meet Angie Everhart again at a restaurant. And before she gets there, really nicely done where a car goes up and hits the girl and the girl bounces off. But it doesn't look stupid. It doesn't look goofy. And then the car comes back and runs her, runs her over and kills her. And then David Caruso gives him this pretty damn good, I would say one of the most underrated car chases I've ever seen. Because people make fun of it on YouTube and they say it's goofy, it's stupid, it's lame, it's boring. And I'm thinking, name one car chase scene in the past year alone. Well, other than Mammoth Fury Road, because that's the entire movie is a fucking car chase. What, Fury 7? With the CGI? No, this shit was done for real. I'll take a car I'll take this over the shit in Fury 7. I know people disagree. To each their own. I like this car chase. I think it's very well done. Jumping these huge gaps, and that's why people don't like it. Oh, if he landed, it would, the suspension. Sus I don't give a fuck. Maybe it's called suspending your belief, or even your disbelief. Or it's a fucking movie, or hey, that looks cool, and hey, maybe a car can do that. I don't know shit about cars. Maybe Dave Cruz got lucky on that day. I don't know. I'm having fun, so I don't give a fuck. I think it looks cool. And these crazy turns and barely missing cars and bouncing back and forth. Not back and forth, but bouncing up and down. Trying to figure out where the car is chasing his ad. Driving through the grass. Having to drive through a damn uh, parade, Chinatown parade. And even the bad guy just says fuck it, starts mowing down some people. And the people in the parade game pits are pounding on Dave Caruso's car is following him, trying to follow him. He's trying to say, get out of the way. I think the editing is well done. It's not confusing. It's not schizophrenic. I know where the location's at. It's a cool location to shoot out through a Chinatown parade. And um, I think it's well shot. It's well choreographed. It's entertaining. I don't see how it's boring. I don't get the boring part. It's a kind of neat take where they have to go slow through this parade, but of course the bad guy don't give a fuck if mowing down. It's like, why wouldn't a bad guy do that? And why would a bad guy give a shit about the other people? And it's true. That's why he runs off, and then people are pounding and breaking David Caruso's window and gets through. He's driving by the water trying to find him. He turns. A car comes, hits his vehicle, and the vehicle literally flies. Boom. And people are like, that wouldn't happen. I just saw it happen. What the fuck are you talking about? I just saw a car run into another car and bounce off. I just saw it happen. It was not fucking green screen. It wasn't CGI. I just saw it happen. So what the fuck are people talking about? It wouldn't happen. I just saw it happen. What? You think it was done with Tonka trucks? If you don't like the film, that's fine. If you don't like the scene, that's fine. But it's just this part of me that goes, this is why fucking films suck nowadays. There's a cool scene like this, oh shit. But you okay with fucking half-ass CGI Fury 7 bullshit? Look like a fucking cartoon. That's the cartoon. That's the bullshit. So after that, really cool car chase. And even a, a homeless guy looks at Dave Caruso who gets out of the water. And the guy goes, you fucked, man, you fucked up. <laughs> Which made me chuckle. Then, of course, he's got some cuts on there. And shows the tape to Linda, Ferentino, and Chaz Palminteri. They find the car that was in the chase. So, no, it's not really Linda Fiorentino's car. It was another car made to look like it was Linda Fiorentino's car. Uh, which leads to Dave Caruso trying to get the Chaz Palminteri. Oh yeah, also there was another witness 
who he's killed. You see a brief shot. Really nasty. It looks like the head was cut right here and is all this area is all fucked up. And the witness was killed at the same time that Linda Florentino tried to seduce David Caruso. Because it's that jade part of her sort of switch turning. And Caruso realizes, well, she couldn't have killed him because, first off, that car wasn't hers because we found it. And second, she was there trying to seduce me at the same time this person was killed. Tulsa Chas Palmentary, they get to Linda Florentino's place. Which I like the idea that the whole time is shot in blue. The idea of the scene, a little bit of uh, atmosphere to it. And uh, again, I think James Horn does a pretty good job with the score. It fits the film well. And some guys are start chasing and attacking Linda Fiorentino. And Charles Palmentary and David Caruso gets there. And this is where I get to... I get my only complaint with the film is the ending's a bit unsatisfying because... Charles Palmentary shoots one, Dave Caruso fights another guy off, and you find out that the guy is actually Michael Bean. And the whole point of this is that the governor, doesn't, Richard Credit, doesn't want those photos to be released and to kill the witnesses and clean business and shit like that. And he's fighting Michael Bean and actually gets a couple punches to Michael Bean. But before their fight finishes, Chess Palmetto comes up and shoots Michael Bean. And I'm like, eh, I would have preferred if David Caruso had gotten to do that. That's one thing. And then the next scene is David Caruso going up to Richard Crenna and saying, you know, just leave her alone. And that if you, if anything happens to her, I'll go to the press with the pictures. And Richard Crenna threatens, like, uh, and what if anything happens to you? And Dave Caruso says, just leave her alone. And then Richard Crane says, you know, get the fuck out of my office. So that almost seems like a thread dangling that's not quite finished. And then the third one is the next scene is Charles Palmentary talking with Linda Fiorentino. And Linda Fiorentino finds out that Charles Palmentary killed the guy at the beginning of the film. Because he was blackmailing them. Like, uh, the other people were the... Shit's worked with the governor. But the guy at the beginning was Chess Palmentary. Because of the... He was blackmailing you. I don't want anyone to hurt you. And hey, next time we make love, introduce me to Jade. Sort of for alter ego. Now, the thing with the director's cut, I remember, I know it's there, is... Which at least would have made the ending work better for me is that when Charles Palmentary says that it cuts to outside and David Caruso is actually listening in and recording the conversation so he's got Charles Palmentary's confession on tape so at least you know the okay Charles Palmentary you know kill Michael Bean at least David Caruso got a couple hits on Michael Bean. It wasn't Caruso being worthless. Okay, Richard Crenna, that dangle, that that's a little bit dangling. Still not satisfied with that. But at least with the director's cut, at least that Chaz Palmentary, that is not dangling as well. It would have had David Caruso. Again, that's in the director's cut, which I don't have. I can't find. And then it's Dave Caruso getting out of the car, walking up to the house, and then the movie ends. Pretty much saying that I have evidence against you, Chaz Palmentary, and you, you know, maybe you can help out Linda Fiorentino, and at least something there. So, the way my only complaint with this film is the ending is unsatisfying. The director's cut would not help that 100%, but it would help at least a bit. Like, to me, it's like, okay, David Cruz doesn't get to kill Michael Bean's character, and the whole thing with Richard Crenna, that's sort of dangling there, and on top of that, this whole Chaz Palmentary thing. It's like too many things left in the air dangling. I keep saying that, but... At least the director's cut... I think would have been... It, it's a better ending.
and the director's cut. Which I, I wish this was the director's cut. So that's my really my only complaint about it. Yeah, it's not the most original film, but most films aren't. Um, I'm not the biggest erotic thriller type of movies, but I thought William Friedkin did a good job. Friedkin did a good job directing this. Yeah, I thought it was well paced. I didn't get bored. I wasn't confused by the plot. I understood the plot fine. I thought it has a good cast. Dave Caruso, Linda Fiorentino, Chelsea Palminteri, Michael Bean, Richard Trenna. I thought the whole cast did well. James Horner, who I miss. He was one of my favorite composers, as well as Jerry Goldsmith and a few others like Hans Zimmer. But I miss James Horner. I thought the score fit the film well. Has a damn good car chase. Uh, I thought it was a lot more exciting than Basic Instinct. And this film just hated on a lot, critically. One thing I don't understand, this film on Wikipedia says it cost $50 million. There's no reason why. Why did it cost $50 million? Unless Joe Esterhaus, maybe he's got a lot of fucking cocaine, whores, and coke parties. Like coke whore parties. Maybe that's why, but... There's no reason. I'm, my friend Mike actually did a review of Days of Thunder. He talked about how, you know, that budget ratcheted up because of the producers. Maybe it was something like that behind the scenes. Because that's the only way I can see how this cost fifty million. Because it's not on the screen, other than that, really, to me, a cool car chase. But fifty million? No, there's no reason why it should cost that much. So I have to think of some behind the scenes stuff, which there are no features. So, never know. But yeah, critics took a dump on this. Critically, commercially, it bombed. I liked it. I think it's a pretty decent film. I would say underrated just because I don't think a single person has reviewed this film on YouTube. Not a single person. No one talks about the film. I don't think it's that bad of a flick at all. My issues are with the ending, which some of that would be fixed. Is there any way to have a director's cut of this released? Or is there any way I can find it? If someone can help me, please let me know. But yeah, Paramount didn't do anything for this. Yeah. I like the film. I don't think the film's that bad. But that's just my opinion. And I thought David Caruso was really good. Yeah, I'm a fan of him. Uh, I, I could talk. I like him as an actor. So anyway, I figure, hey, no one's ever done a review for Jade. It was a film that Joe Esterhaus kind of wrote, since I did Basic Instinct, why not this? And, hey, no one else has reviewed this, so I might as well do a lengthy one, because 30 some minutes for Jade is pretty lengthy. But, you know, I like it. I don't think it's that bad of a flick. Be the way, I, I, was, I would say underrated. I don't love it, it's not perfect, but... I've seen a lot worse movies. And a lot of movies that deserve much more of the harsh criticism that this film got. This film isn't that bad. It doesn't deserve a zero out of five. I mean, the acting, the cast, the score, the car chase alone isn't worth a zero. Come on, give me a break. But hey, that's just me. Oh well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.